Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to today's video. So in today's video I'm going to talk all about my twin pregnancy, the whole story from start to finish to finding out I was pregnant to then delivering my girls to then my recovery from surgery, NICU, all of that. I'm going to touch on every subject, go into detail about a few things. I have got quite a few clips as well that I'm going to insert which is going to be fun because it's kind of like everything's going to be in one place instead of loads of different videos. So let's get on with it and let's start with my twin pregnancy story. So if you're new to my channel then my name is Lucy. I'm a mum of four, now four, now I've had my twin girls. So I am 29 and I had Jensen when I was 23. He is now very nearly six. I had Jesse when I was 25 and he is three and a half. And then I'm 29 now and I've got my twin girls, India Lily and Rosabella Winter. So let's go back to the very beginning when me and Jordan even discussed having another baby. So we had our two boys. Jesse was around two, I think, was around the time we started discussing whether we were going to have another baby or not. Because you kind of, we kind of got to a point where we thought... We like having our children um, close together. It's not, well, when, when we say close together, I mean like two to three years difference. So we kind of had to decide whether we were gonna have another baby or not, or just stop altogether and just have our two boys. So there was a period of time where I actually didn't want any more children after I had Jesse. You know, when you've had a baby and you're like, oh my goodness, I don't want any more children. Like, this is enough. But then as he got older, things just got so much easier and we both loved every minute of it. We we loved every minute of being parents and we loved everything about it. Obviously there are definitely ups and downs, but on the whole, we loved everything about it. So when Jessie was around two, we decided that actually we did want another baby and it would be our last and we thought we'd have three children and we were very much happy with that. Are you, are you, was the question, are you trying for another baby? Am I? Are you trying for the baby? I like to try. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the question. Yeah, I like to try. Are we trying for another baby? Practicing, is that what you call it? Are we trying for another baby? Well, I suppose. Not at the moment, because you're saying. No, saying. exactly. Why are no, not at the moment. Long to answer? You're oh, like, yeah, no, no. Are you waiting just, for me to direct it or something? Because um, Lucy's got a kidney thing. I've got to have another operation, which has come through. My operation date mm -hmm. came through. And it will be on... Sooner than you thought. That's good. Yeah, in a, in a week and a half's time. Mm. So, yes, I'm very happy and excited about that. Are we trying to be with them? No. Because of that, will we be after? Maybe. Not really sure. Well, you've got to see how the, the thing goes. Because, exactly, because my operation, we don't know how that's going to go. Be it will be another three to four months after that, probably. Yeah. So, it's all about uh, on the air. Told you. What's wrong, darling? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's wrong, son? <laughs> Oh, don't talk to her. I'm allowed to talk to her. What's wrong, Jess? <laughs> oh my god, he's covered. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that means, that little screech means, don't talk to me. Look how Jess has just come in. Oh, did you, um, I'd, I'd go and check the landing if I was Hmm. Great. Oh my god. Oh my god, we're not having much luck tonight. Jordan's just found some unidentified <laughs> object on the wipes. Yeah. What yeah. happened then, Jess? How did you get so messy? Oh, yeah. It was Dada. Yeah. Everything's Dada at the moment. Was it Daddy that got messy? Yeah. So I stopped contraception, but then I actually got kidney stones. So with kidney stones, you basically can't be pregnant because you need surgery. So I had one round of kidney stone surgery, and then I found out I had to wait six months after that because it might come back. And it did come back, so then I had to wait for another round of surgery. And all these things take quite a lot of time. So had my second kidney stone operation. I'm not sure if I've got any footage actually of me when I had my kidney stone surgery, but if so, I will insert it. I had the chat with my surgeon and the anaesthetist. Here is my gown, here is my stockings. So I've got a stone in my kidney and around the stone is very swollen so 
they think, the well, they don't know whether they're going to have to put a stent in or not on what they're going to see when they get in there. So they're just going to deal with it when they get in. They have warned my sister that um, I'm going to be quite a while. So I'm out of surgery. It's literally half seven at night and I've had to stay in. It's just such a long story. And I don't really have the energy to explain everything now. So I'm going to explain it tomorrow um, when I feel like a bit better. But I've had a bit of a nightmare all day, been so much pain. The operation was quite complicated. Um, it's not the end, I need another potentially two operations. But my sister's gone home now and Jordan's come to see me. And I've had a little bit of food. And Jordan went and got fish and, no, no it's not fish, was it pasty? Sausage and chips and pasty. Sausage and chips. And um, <laughs> I said, well, that looks nice when he come back. He was like, well, you really shouldn't be eating too much, aka, don't even think no, about no, it. No, man, but I don't want you to be upset. I said I want one a few chips, and he was yeah, like, you can have a few chips. He was like, well, you really shouldn't be eating too much, and I just thought, I know what you're up to, mate. But, um, yeah, I'm hoping I'm going to improve tomorrow. I was really hoping to go home. I was ready to go home. I just had a funny turn. Um, yeah, only because you had so many drugs. Trying to keep on top of my painkillers, because it's so painful. So then I was finally clear of kidney stones and funnily enough I actually have a checkup at the kidney stone clinic next week so hopefully I'm completely clear again after my pregnancy. So after I was clear of kidney stones we then decided it was kind of up in the air we never discussed it we never kind of had that discussion but we never kind of didn't plan for it I don't know it's, it's all very confusing but Long story short, I got pregnant and it was a shock, of course. I think I think even if you're planning it, any kind of pregnancy is a shock as such because it's a miracle, isn't it? It really is a miracle. So, yeah, I found out I was pregnant and this is actually the moment I found out I was pregnant. This is a very random video. So I've had a very busy two days in London. Now I'm back and I am due on my cycle today but I haven't had any signs that it's coming so I'm impatient and I like to know like what's going on usually my cycle has arrived by now so I'm going to take a pregnancy test and see what the outcome is. So this is a test that I've got it is just a clear blue one from down the shop. Okay guys I actually cannot believe this i was fully expecting not that i am kind of in shock it wasn't there at first and i thought right okay no the line has just shown up oh my goodness i don't know what to say oh my god that is so exciting i'm so so happy and then of course i had to tell jordan i was pregnant in this video he literally had no idea um that I was pregnant. Oh, so Jordan has cooked us dinner. Hello. <laughs> oh my god, you know I was feeling like really weird yesterday, like I don't know, like weirdly anxious. <laughs> no, I didn't know that. Yeah, you did about the event. And you're like, you don't normally feel nervous. You'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you'll be fine. Um, I was actually due on. That's why. Don't check out on the thing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, so um Homemade dinner here. Yeah? Homemade dinner by Jordan. It's actually is it Moroccan chicken? Yeah. Moroccan chicken with Slim and World little rosemary potatoes. And it's pretty darn healthy to be fair. So yeah, I wasn't feeling a hundred percent. Um but I had it come on. I hadn't come on by the time I got home. I had my cycle hadn't started. So I thought I'd get a test on the way home. What are you saying? <laughs> you actually joking me? You actually joking? Oh. <laughs> no, I'm not joking. What's that mean, then? One line's not pregnant. Are you pregnant? Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh well, there we go. We've got another little toddler. Baby. So that was the whole setup. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not setting you up. Wait, you said don't say that on camera. Oh. 
I didn't expect that, darling. So you're going to be a dad of Bloody three. Nora. I'm already knackered. Gosh, you're going to be a dad of three. Oh, I didn't take long. No, I know. Hey? Where's the fun in that? <laughs> oh, wow. Have you told the boys? No, because I think we should wait. Oh, when you you've got to tell them on here, then? We'll tell them, but not, not for a few months. Just oh. in case. Oh, wow. So how long was that? I'm actually four weeks pregnant today. Well, I did, you didn't tell, I did not even have one clue what you're on about. We moved last year when Je when we were, I was pregnant last time, Jesse was two weeks old when we moved house. Yeah. But yeah, there we go. So we might be. I was going to wait till tomorrow's oh, to tell you. Oh yeah, God, you better not tell them boys. They'll be shouting around the blue thing. I was going to wait till tomorrow to tell you, but I just couldn't wait any longer. You're asking me all these questions and... What's I asking you? Oh, just about like the event and stuff. And I was going to be answers and all I want to say is, oh, actually... Oh, wow. So how long do we got to wait again? Till what? Like, three is enough now, I think. <laughs> I was, three is like... Well, that's enough for me. <laughs> hey? What, do you reckon, boy or girl? No, but boy. Dad of three boys. Dad of three boys, I reckon. And it made me laugh so much when we spoke about the time of the month. He was like, stop talking about that on camera. He had no idea what I was about to come out with. So we were really happy at this point. I was four, around four weeks pregnant. And that was before any sickness or symptoms started. And we both felt really happy because I was feeling good physically and mentally. Um, we were excited for the future and we're both feeling really happy. Then I told my sister that I was pregnant. I think I was around five weeks at this point, and she again had no idea. But um, there was a reason I got you on camera, actually, sis. Right? <laughs> and it's not to start the vlog. So sis thought I was sitting her down to start the vlog, but I've got you on camera because I've got something to tell you. So you know you were asking me about what my goals were <laughs> for this year yeah, and all that kind me. of stuff. Are you pregnant? <laughs> Are you pregnant? Are you pregnant? I'm actually pregnant with my third baby. <laughs> Why are you so emotional, sis? Because I'm so happy for you because you didn't know when you were going to be able to have a third one. I know you really wanted a third one. <laughs> and I just was worried. <laughs> I was crying my eyes. I'm going to let me connect myself. Oh, I cried so much. you worried about me? I just was upset for you because I wasn't sure when you were going to have number three and I knew you really 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 wanted one and I knew no matter what you said to people like oh I don't really mind like I knew I knew you wanted one so I'm just so happy for you oh, thank you sis I can't wait yeah, yeah what do we think I don't know but obviously I'm going to find out the sex <gasps> obviously sis yeah so you let me throw your gender reveal party for everyone else yes oh, oh my, my god, god. So you're gonna host a gender reveal. So you, is Jordan gonna know? I feel like Jordan would want to know. No, 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 Jordan's not gonna know. It's gonna be a surprise for oh, him. Just imagine if it's actually a girl and everyone I think will Jordan's face would be really shocked. Like, imagine that. Everyone would be really Have shocked. You what did Jensen say? I haven't told Jensen yet. Right, As okay. of this video, when this video goes live, Jensen will know. But um, I haven't told him yet just because, you know, it's a bit early and. Sis, I just feel like it's the perfect time though, don't you? Yeah, I do, yeah. And he's surprised it happened You're so quick. Oh my god, I know. Imagine that. He's like, no, no, no. Oh I, I think I'd actually be okay with twins. Of course like, you would, sis. You could handle anything. You could handle tri triplets oh, and quadruplets. But yeah, so he's really happy. He was like, oh my god, though, this is definitely going to last. Oh my he was god. He like, I only want three kids. I was like, that's fine. Did Jordan get emotional? No. no. <laughs> He's like, oh really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know Jordan. Oh, I love this. So Dad's going to open his birthday card. Well, that's the picture that they drew of me. <laughs> Jesse drew that. Inside to Dad and Granddad. Happy birthday, Granddad. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, read out the rest. Some news for you. Read it out. Third question <laughs> is on the oh. road. I don't filming? think that's the best beer thing that you could have. I've been inside here. You know the little brown <laughs> child, I'm delighted with that. Absolutely thrilled. Brilliant news. It is brilliant news. Oh, yeah. so happy. What, what do you think, sis? Your... Oh. How did you find out? Me? You're cycling. Are you no, feeling I'm emotional? Oh. Oh. I love you. Camera. It's so funny that my sister 
made the joke of imagine it was twins. I literally had no idea and not for a second did me or Jordan ever discuss having twins. I just didn't think it would ever happen to me. I was like, yeah, that no, that wouldn't happen to me. I don't know why because my mum had twins but her twins were identical. So according to science, identical twins are not inherited. Only non-identical twins are inherited. So at this point I told Jordan I told the whole, we told the whole family, our close family, and then around seven weeks, so I think I was around seven and a half weeks pregnant, I actually started bleeding, and at that point, I completely thought that the pregnancy was done, because it was quite a lot of blood, and I'd bled in previous pregnancies with Jessie, but it wasn't very much, so I kind of still had a bit of hope. Whereas this time, it was quite a lot. And I honestly thought that was it. Um, so I went to the hospital. And when I went into the hospital, I had a scan. And I was genuinely expecting the worst. And I led back and they scanned me. And I was on my own at this point because obviously Jordan, I think, was at work. And... Um, we've got two children, so I need them looking after. I can't remember exactly what everyone was at this point, but I was on my own at the scan, and that was my choice. I was completely fine with that. And I led back, they did the scan, and the... Hey guys, so I am nearly eight weeks pregnant today, and I have had some bleeding, like, in the night. Um, TMI, maybe, when when you wipe there is brown blood there so i am here at the early pregnancy clinic and i honestly i don't know what's going to happen um as it's quite a bit of blood i don't really have the best feeling about this but we shall see i went in for a scan and the radiographer was like um they're twins in your family i was like yeah, my mum had twins, so my mum had identical twins. And she turned the screen around, and that is what she showed me. <laughs> she showed me my stomach with two babies. So we are having twins. Very unexpected. They are in their own sacks at the moment. Obviously they're not going to change sacks, they're in their own sacks for the whole of the pregnancy. Um, so at the minute we are unsure whether they are identical or non-identical, the radiographer, um, is that the right word? I think it is, thought they would probably be non-identical twins. Um, because my mum had identical twins, identical twins are not inherited, any egg can split. But, uh, we think I'm having non-identical twins, that means I've ovulated two eggs instead of one. And both were fertilised, so... There is the first picture of the twins, the Carter twins. And I don't even want to say that it was a shock because I can't remember it to being a massive shock. I just remember feeling completely and utterly blessed because first of all, I was expecting the worst. I, I genuinely was expecting the worst. So anything on that was amazing news. So I was just happy. I was really happy. I thought that's amazing, uh, what a blessing, um, I just felt so many happy thoughts and of course I then, and of course I then had to come home and tell Jordan about it, so I broke the news to Jordan that we were having twins. You alright then? Uh huh. Good. Where have you been? Working. Working. Picking stone. Picking stone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, do you want to see a scan that I took this morning at the hospital? Oh, hi Nanny. Hello Bess. Come on Nanny. It's not twins yet. I took a picture. Are you actually joking? <laughs> Is it twins? <laughs> Is that actually twins? Are you joking? Look at the scan. Yeah, what does that mean? Look at you can tell. It's got text on oh it. Oh my god. What? <laughs> Are you actually joking? No. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna have a heart attack. <laughs> oh wow, darling. Nuns, have you seen this? Dad of four. Have you seen this? An owl. What? Owl. What's that? Owl. An what? owl. Owl? It's, it's a picture of mummy's baby. Oh my good Jesus. 
How do you feel? Um, a bit overwhelmed actually. That's gonna be hard, isn't it? And he was probably way more shocked than I was, um, but he took it in his stride and we were really happy. We are really happy. So previous to this, previous to me bleeding, around six weeks, I started to feel really sick. Um, I had had morning sickness in my previous pregnancies, but this morning sickness was something else. It was intense. It was really intense. It was horrible, really hard to deal with. And there's so many things I could say about um, high paremesis gravadium. I probably said that wrong, but extreme morning sickness, HG, let's call it HG. I made a whole video on it, so I will link it below if you are going through that and you want some tips. But going through that is tough, especially tough when you have two children that you need to care for. It was a lot and it was very bittersweet because I felt very miserable, feeling so ill, but I was also really happy because I was pregnant and this is what I wanted and um, we were having twins, it was amazing and it was just so bittersweet. I lost a lot of weight, I just couldn't eat hardly anything. So we're just about to arrive at our scan. I was going to ask Jordan then if he was excited, but actually I know the answer to that, so I'm not going to. What? No. <laughs> I don't feel like Jordan ever gets excited about anything. Oh, well, mate, I do. I'm feeling a bit nervous. How are you feeling, Jordan? Happy to see. Happy. First scan, but the second scan is the best, isn't it? Because you actually see. No, I'd say the first scan's the oh, really? best. Yeah. Oh, well, for personally, for me, the second scan, because... You don't get to see much in the second scan, because the baby's quite big. Oh, really? Hmm. Oh, yeah. I can't actually remember, to be fair. Yeah, yeah Jordan doesn't know. <laughs> no, true, Jordan doesn't really know what he's on about, um, scan-wise. But, yeah, we're just pulling out to the scan place. Baby. What are you looking at, Jesse? Two babies. Two no, babies? Baby one. There's one of them. Baby. And... Where's the other one, then? Baby two. And there they are together, in Mummy's tummy. Oh, wow. I did go into hospital at one point because I was so dehydrated. I just, I was at rock bottom physically with the HG. Anyone that's been through it, anyone that has been through it will know exactly what it's like. And I guess if you haven't been through it, it's kind of hard to relate. It just feels like you have the worst. Imagine yourself as having the worst sickness bug you've ever had. And it's basically like that, but for a really long period of time until I was um, around 17 weeks pregnant, 17, 18 weeks pregnant. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to my 16 week pregnancy update. So I'm 16 weeks pregnant on the down film in this video. So let's start off with the thing that I mostly talk about in my pregnancy videos is my sickness, okay? So from being six weeks pregnant, I have had the most horrendous morning sickness. It is so awful. Um, nothing really helped to manage it and I had, I, I don't wanna say have because maybe I've put a little bit back on now, but I had lost quite a bit of weight. A lot of you guys were noticing it actually. Some of you may still notice it now. Yeah, so it was awful. I literally couldn't eat anything. And then a few days ago, well last week, it literally peaked and um, I genuinely was just being sick every 20 minutes and it was just like bile, it was horrible so I couldn't even eat or drink anything. So I actually ended up going to hospital and the, my local hospital, Bath IUH, couldn't have been any better. They gave me loads and loads of fluids and um, some new medication which has actually been such a lifesaver. I feel a hundred times better. I still do have my moments, don't get me wrong, like when I eat something, I think, hmm, like, has that gone down okay? It feels a little bit, but so no, I'm not perfect, but, but that's fine. I don't expect to be. I just feel so much better and I'm able to do things and I'm able to eat not as much as I was eating pre-pregnancy, but I'm able to eat, I'd say, three kind of like medium to smallish size meals a day. So I'm doing well. I'm drinking a lot more. So yeah, I'm really, really pleased with that. 
and I feel like it's literally all up here and I was exactly the same with Jessie when they did my c-section um, they had to put their hand right up there and they were like he is so high up and there's definitely lots going on up here so um, I'm all top at the moment literally my bump is all top but I feel like I've really grown just over the last few days um, can't remember the last time I showed my bump on YouTube maybe not at all yeah I tried all different kinds of medication in the end I went on a medication called on dance tron on dance tron I'm not even sure if that's available anymore because I did see something on a Facebook group I'm in that apparently there's some some research about it that has kind of made it not be used as much but yeah I went on that medication not for very long actually only for a few weeks because one day I just decided to stop taking it I stopped taking it and I felt okay without taking the medication so i i got over the hg around 17 to 18 weeks and my mum also had hg when she was pregnant with twins and she recovered around the same time so i was hoping that i took after my mum and i recovered around then and i did so i was very pleased about that but throughout my whole pregnancy from six weeks until the end i had heartburn heartburn from six weeks so it must have been hormonal i went on a medication called omeprazole which was brilliant and i was literally on that for my whole pregnancy that cured the heartburn thank goodness felt okay with heartburn and i then had from six weeks pregnant to giving birth a horrible taste in my mouth which completely put me off so many foods just an, just as an example i cannot drink ice blast from the cinema anymore the taste in my mouth just made it taste horrible um eating fast food left a horrible taste in my mouth that made it like it accentuated the taste that was already in my mouth so i hardly ate fast food from my whole pregnancy which probably wasn't a bad thing but a really bizarre taste in my mouth which i didn't have with any of my previous pregnancies not to this extent um indigestion yeah all of my symptoms were just heightened and Anyone that's had any of these symptoms in pregnancy, you, you'll know what it's like. But for me, it was heightened so much being a twin pregnancy. And it was bittersweet. But I felt so much better around 17 to 18 weeks. But at that point, I had lost quite a lot of weight. So my bump was quite small. And then I was going for regular scans. Because when you have twins, you go for more regular scans. And every twin pregnancy is different. And I guess it also depends on the area that you live in. But in my area, you had a scan every four weeks from 20 weeks. So at my 20 week scan, when I'd, when I'd just recovered from the sickness, I was very thin. I'd lost a lot of weight and my bump wasn't that big for a twin bump. And I went for my 20 week scan and both of the twins were measuring small. So I, roughly from what I remember, I will insert a video clip of an update because I actually can't remember the exact specifics but I think one twin was measuring 17 weeks and maybe one twin was measuring a little bit more. So I've just got home and the boys are playing on the Xbox in the background so you may hear noise. But I've actually been referred to um, the fetal medicine unit in Bristol because twin two, I get confused because I feel like at every scan they label the different twins, different twin one and two. So in this scan, twin two is measuring 17 and a half. They're so loud. Jensen's got his friends over, so I just shut the door. Um, twin two in this scan is measuring 17 and a half weeks. And twin one is measuring 19 weeks, which is what I am. So the scanner... I never know what to call them, sonographer, um, said on that basis you have to be referred just so they can do a more in-depth scan. Other than that, everything was fine. I got sent for a more in-depth scan at a fetal medicine unit and that scan come back all fine, everything looked fine, just the girls looked a lot smaller than they should be. So that was kind of in my head throughout my whole pregnancy that the girls were going to be tiny. So I then went overboard and bought loads of tiny baby clothes because I was convinced that they were going to be absolutely tiny. And then towards the end of my pregnancy, my bump, like when I started to feel a lot better, started eating loads and 
doing all that, my bump then started to get quite big. And by the end of my pregnancy, I was measuring 43 weeks. And I did have another scan, I think it was my last scan, where the girls had just literally had a growth spurt and they were measuring like quite big for their age instead of small. I think India was on the 50th centile and Rosabella was on the 75th centile. So they had gone from being tiny babies that were too small to then being bigger than average babies. So I don't know what happened there. I don't know what happened there. But yes, so by the end of my pregnancy, I was measuring 43 weeks. I got through my second trimester of pregnancy I'd say in a twin pregnancy, the first trimester goes on forever because you feel so sick and you have all of the symptoms, for me personally, up until about 17 to 18 weeks. And then you maybe have a few weeks of the second trimester bliss, as people say, and then you kind of get to a point where you're big. And from when I started being, from when I stopped being sick, I then started putting weight on, which was great, is what you mentioned in pregnancy and my bumps started growing so then the third trimester comes earlier than a singleton pregnancy so your your moment of bliss is a lot less so my third trimester what felt like started way earlier than it should have so i started to feel really big really out of breath really out of breath and at this point i started to go on iron tablets because my iron levels were dropping which really helped actually um I started taking iron tablets early and that really helped me build up a good iron supply for the rest of my pregnancy and then post birth. So I was breathless though that, yeah, the twins were just up near my lungs and when I led, led down I couldn't lay on my back because I genuinely could hardly breathe. Sleeping became an issue, um, it was interesting, I was not sleeping well at all, I, I say this um, to anyone that I meet that says they're struggling with sleeping when they're pregnant, I sleep better when I have a newborn than when I do in my third trimester of pregnancy. So with twins, that was just heightened. I felt like I was a full term. I was the size of a full term um, singleton pregnancy at around 35 weeks. And yeah, I just felt so big. I was so uncomfortable, but not to a point where I couldn't have carried on because I would have. I just felt very uncomfortable. Also, we found out the sex of the babies. So my sister for us a gender reveal party and here is what happened. So we're just going to go through now. What we got then? Oh, everything is just amazing. Wow, amazing. It was always going to be, wasn't it, sis, of Laura organising. Never thought it would be so hard. I grew up without a scar. Just living my life with no big worries And I've always known what I want Just didn't know what came along Finding myself a much less happy Back in the days I used to dream about one day A life so amazing Not everyone judging me care about them though it hurts so bad I wanna stay wide open cause if I shut down it just gives them right I wanna stay wide open ooh, 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 ooh. Three, two, one, and then go. Right, ready? Three, two, two one. Surprise. Very happy. We'd be happy with either, but yeah. a bit nervous actually. It's I've nice never had because to look after girls. Only very rare. Yes. 
You want some cake? Yeah, you can get it in. Oh. Okay, you can hold the moon. He wants to hold the moon. Oh, you can yeah, eat the moon. Right. You hold the moon, Go mate. On, Go on. You can eat the moon. Good boy. So, I well, you knew it was girls anyway. I knew. Last week. I knew last week of the scan, but Jordan didn't. I didn't. I think it's nice because we've never done it before. So, we've had two boys, and now it would be so different with two girls. Goodness me. Oh, goodness me. Jordan's nervous. Ah. Uh, Who's got two girls? What's it like? Who's got four kids? Yeah. What's it like? Changes all around. Two twins, girls, and four children. So we found out we were having two girls. Um, we've ha we have two boys, and now we found out we we're having two girls. We we were over the moon. I was over the moon. Jordan was over the moon, but he was in shock, as he then um, he was in shock. He was obviously in shock because he we I. We both never thought we'd have girls. We honestly never thought um, we'd have girls. We didn't even know if we are going to have another baby at one point. So to find out we're then having twins, to find out it's then going to be two girls, it was it was amazing, but it was a lot to get used to, of course. It's a massive life change having one baby, let alone two babies, let alone two babies that you don't know, because we knew boys, we knew how to be with boys. Jordan loves being a boy dad. So at that point, I think he was a bit apprehensive as to what it may be like um he's amazing obviously he's such an amazing dad and he loves his girls to bits just thought i'd throw that one in there in case anyone thinks he doesn't he obviously does he is an amazing dad just at that point i think he's probably a bit apprehensive as to what it may be like but i think he loves being a girl dad let me ask him so how do you feel about being a dad to girls now you've done it for a few months i like it you like it it's making me soft Making you soft. I do because I'm like, oh, okay, okay. And how do you feel about being a dad to twins? Excited. Right. Happy. Uh, it's not without its challenges, but um, yeah, that's all about life. So there we go. For me, finding out I was having two girls, I was thrilled. I was thrilled. I genuinely, as I said, never thought I'd have one daughter, let alone two. I absolutely love my sons to pieces and I wouldn't change them for the world absolutely wouldn't change them for the world and I feel so lucky that I have two boys and two girls at my midwife appointments throughout my second and third trimester my blood pressure was rising slowly but it was definitely on the rise at my appointment I think I was at 35 weeks I then got sent to hospital basically because I had protein in my urine and my blood pressure was too high to be safe. So I got sent to hospital and I basically didn't come out. <laughs> I didn't come out for, I think it was around a week because I had the girls, so. Okay. Let's see how the midwife goes. See what my blood pressure's doing. Uh, yeah, I don't really know what else we do at this appointment because I know I'm, I know I'm having a planned C-section, so don't, we don't need to discuss birth or anything like that. So let me dig my notes out, which are stuffed down there, and um, I'll see you when I'm out. Okay, sorry about the lighting. We are actually on our way to hospital because I said I haven't been feeling right the last few days earlier in the video, and um, what was I going to say? Ooh, went to the midwife obviously got high blood pressure which I suspected so I knew I had a midwife appointment so I'm really pleased about that they got picked up so I've got high blood pressure I've got protein in my urine God, do I talk enough about urine on these pregnancy vlogs <laughs> um, yeah and and those things like that so I'm on my way to the IUH I don't know what's gonna happen there because the same thing happened with Jensen that this happened but they just kept me in on medication because they didn't have time to one day, no induce one. me yeah i don't know what's gonna happen but this man jc will be probably keeping you updated a bit more than me um, i've also had the most horrendous back pain i don't know what that's all about i don't know why i got admitted to the ward for um high blood pressure and also at this point I wasn't feeling as many movements as I had been previously and when I went on the heart rate monitors the girls heart rates were sometimes not all the time but sometimes they did dip quite a lot so that was a concern 
So because of me having high blood pressure, protein in my urine, I wasn't ever diagnosed with preeclampsia. My blood, I think, was okay and reduced movements from the girls. They did decide to induce me early. So I must have been nearly 36 weeks because when I had the girls, I was 36 weeks plus two, I think. So I must have been sent to hospital just before I was 36 weeks. And yes, yeah, so we got induced. So when I say that we got induced, um, I was having a planned C-section. This is because I'd already previously had two C-sections. Jensen was an emergency C-section. Jessie was a planned C-section. Jensen was an emergency C-section because I was induced. And basically, labour wouldn't happen. I got to eight centimetres and his heart rate kept dropping really low. And if they'd stopped the in induction drugs, I was on the drip, they tried to stop the drugs, but every time they tried to stop the drugs, his heart rate would dip even more. So at, at that point, his heart rate was dangerously low, that the alarms went off and I went into theatre and I had Jensen. This was nearly six years ago. So because of my two previous C-sections and because of a twin pregnancy, one of the twins was also transverse, not breech, but sideways across my stomach. So I think even if um, your twin is transverse or breech, you are highly recommended to have a C-section above of all the other reasons why you're recommended to have a c-section with twins i do know people that have had that have given birth naturally with twins but for me that wasn't an option the safest option for me because of my previous sections and because of twin or two being transverse was to have a c-section so we went ahead with a c-section and having the girls by a c-section was amazing it really was a planned c-section for me has only ever been a positive experience. I loved every second of it, I really did. I'm, I think Jordan felt the same. We both loved every second of our planned C-section. We have some brilliant photos. Okay. Um, the twins are coming into the world. We're gonna vlog the birth as much as we can. We've been doing a bit of a vlog while we've been in hospital, so it will all be one video, but we're very excited, a little bit nervous, a little bit apprehensive because I know what I'm about to go through. So, go on, darling. Tell we're going him. down. We're going down. We thought it wouldn't happen today, didn't we? Yeah. We both sat here like. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was at this point that we went into theatre. I've lost my voice, by the way. Don't even know why. I actually don't know why. They're both doing really well, actually, as of today as of day nearly, well, not nearly 24 hours post labor. They're both doing really well. Hopefully they'll be on the same ward soon in NICU. So one's on the more special care ward because yeah. she, um, she had mucus on her lungs. She was in an incubator while you think you'd see in the things. Yeah, and... And the clips. There we go. baby sister. Your baby sister, mate. What do, what, do what do you think? What do you think? What do you think, Nan? Is it good? Yeah. Yes. That's your little sister, gents. Little sister. What do you think? Jessie, Pretty? Do you Pretty? Mommy. Yeah. Look at her cute Mommy little face. And the other Mommy. twins downstairs. Mommy. There she is. Twin two. one. Oh, twin two. Oh, I'm getting mixed up already. Me and Jordan have been expressing for twin one who is down in NICU, we've managed to get a mill of colostrum, so we're very impressed. And twin two over here has low blood sugar levels, so I've also expressed for her, and the midwife has um, given her some sugar, and she's had some colostrum, so we're hoping that comes back up soon. Um, going to give these to the girls. So here is our twin one. They say she's doing well. We've pumped a lot of milk for her. Can't really see her in there to be honest. Um, and here is our twin two. Do you want to film her job? Because I can't really do it. And here's twin two. She's got the cannula in. She's ready for a stay tonight. Yeah. Here's twin two. Twin one. Oh, this is twin one. Oh look, she's a lot better this morning. Wow, well, midday, ready to be, try to feed. So we're going to try to first feed. Come 
and it was just completely amazing and I can't say anything negative about it there's nothing you need to be worried about I loved every second of that procedure I loved every second of my c-section meeting the girls I'll, I'll never forget ever I'll never forget this I'll never forget this with any of my children and the the time they hold the babies up over the blue curtain and I remember thinking with the girls so first of all they got Rosabella out who was twin one and they held her up and she was big she was really big for a twin she was so chubby and um so cute and she was six pound three so a really good size for a twin at 36 weeks then they got India out and she was a bit less chubby um a bit smaller but not massively and she was gorgeous as well of course and she was a five pound seven I had my c-section they put the girls on my chest i held them both we had skin to skin it was lovely i then tried to breastfeed and india was an amazing breastfeeder she latched straight on and was fabulous but rosabella was grunting and obviously i don't have any medical experience and i didn't i didn't realize that grunting was something to look out for and it was a sign of breathing difficulty so she kept grunting and she would absolutely not latch on at all. She would not feed. It was really hard to feed her. I don't think we tried a bottle at that point because we were just trying to get her on the breast, but she would not go on. So at that point, the midwife was actually quite concerned about her grunting. They did her... I can't remember I can't remember if it was her oxygen levels or blood sugar levels. One of her stats they weren't happy with. They literally got the pediatric doctor straight out to see her and they took her straight down to NICU and she had to have something called CPAP, which is high flow oxygen, to help her with her breathing. So on the first night she went down to NICU. So I was left in the hospital room with just India. I'd obviously just had a C section, so I was I couldn't move because you can't move post C section because you are um, numb and you can't move. So I was on my own with India in the hospital room and she was doing okay, but then she had to have her blood sugars done, which is a standard procedure when you have a baby, I think. I think it's a standard procedure, not just on early babies. She had to have her blood sugars done and her blood sugars were too low. So the pediatric doctor just said, I'm really sorry but she's gonna have to go down to NICU as well. So I said, of course, whatever's best for the girls. So both of the girls were in NICU and I was in the hospital room on my own. Jordan and my mum and sisters were there and his parents and they could go and see the girls in NICU, but obviously I was couldn't get out of bed at this point. So seven hours, I think, after my C-section, which is the quickest I've ever stood up post C-section, I got out of bed with Jordan's help and we went down to see the girls. I was expressing at this point, I was um, syringing colostrum, I think coloss colostrum, and I was syringing that for the girls so we could feed them with it and yeah, basically from that point on when I was in hospital, I spent my whole time trying to get to NICU, which was tough because trying to recover from a c-section but then trying to recover from a c-section with two babies in NICU in different rooms in NICU trying to be active to be able to see them both and yeah it was tough physically mentally I was okay I couldn't sleep without the girls so I, I really couldn't sleep knowing they were in NICU and I was up in the hospital ward it was tough but physically it was really tough and everyone on the, the wards in the NHS are so busy. I felt guilty asking for help so I had a wheelchair which I managed to get and instead of me sitting in it I'd put all of my stuff in the wheelchair so I'd take my breast pump to get milk for the girls, I'd put it in the wheelchair, I'd take the girls clothes and all of that and I'd put it in the wheelchair and I'd wheel that down to NICU and it was quite a walk especially when you've just had major surgery so that was tough and then a few days later after the girls were in NICU they got released back up to the ward which was amazing so they, we were then all on the ward together and I was recovering really well actually c-section recovery is hard and 
you can only kind of describe it if you've had a c-section but that first time you get up after a c-section is savage it really is savage that's kind of the only way to explain it it is a savage pain it is horrible and so painful you just need to keep on top of your painkillers basically that's my only advice but um it goes it doesn't last forever every c-section recovery is different so never compare your c-section recovery to anyone's all of my c-section recoveries have been different my first one was pretty quick my second c-section took a full six weeks and my third c-section with the girls was kind of somewhere in the middle um it wasn't that quick but it wasn't that long either so i did feel very lucky with that that i was quite mobile pretty soon or well, seven hours after the c-section but anyone that knows the c-section pain can relate it doesn't get any easier but sometimes it takes a bit longer just to get back to full health so yes that was my c-section and my c-section recovery you just have to take it day by day and stick to your painkillers then around day five when the girls were five days old it was actually christmas eve and i was so desperate to get home so desperate to get home because i wanted to be home for christmas with my sons obviously but in hindsight i think i should have for my own sanity and the well-being of me looking being able to look after the girls i probably should have stayed in hospital for another few days but because it was christmas eve and i wanted nothing more than to be at home for christmas with the boys i wanted to get home so i did come home but i was still in a lot of pain from my c-section i was completely overwhelmed when i got home going from having two children to four children that it it only took a few days so looking back i was actually very lucky it only took a few days i should have probably stayed in hospital to give me that extra few days but i didn't i come home and after a few days i did feel okay um i did have a vlog of when the girls were only a few days old so i'll insert a few clips and at that point i was doing well but before that i was a bit all over the place not even drastically i wouldn't say i had the baby blues or anything like that i did have that previously with my first son so i knew what that felt like i didn't have that i just felt overwhelmed basically like oh my goodness how where do you even start with having four children i it was it took a few days to figure that out of where to start and how to do everything but from that point from me getting over the feeling of being overwhelmed so a few days i have not felt better i absolutely love being a mum of four having twins has been one of the most amazing things that has ever happened to me all of my children are the most amazing things that have ever happened to me but having twins is obviously something completely different and something that is twice as challenging but then also twice as rewarding because you have two babies just smile back at you not just one so we have our gorgeous india lily and then we have rosabella winter they're both doing so well we've had a few minor issues such as reflux <laughs> all of my babies have had reflux and now my third and fourth reflux baby it is normal to me like this is having a reflux baby to me is is just the way it is um I am used to being covered in sick, completely used to it. When I remember when I had my first baby and he, Jensen, when he kept being sick all over me, I was like, oh my goodness, how long is this going to last? He's been sick all over himself. It was a lot and I found it challenging, but I'm completely used to it now. It's just normal. And oh, they're sick, more sick. I am completely used to sick, but we're managing it really well this time. The girls are on medication and doing really well. All of my children have been on reflux medication but the girls are doing really well on it and rosabella actually lost weight last week because of her reflux and her being sick but this week with her new medication i am quite confident she has put it on i'm getting her weighed tomorrow and i'm quite confident she's put weight on this week because she's been feeding so so well i feel so lucky that the twins are sleeping really really well apart from a few periods when they were ill so rosabella and india actually had bronchiolitis so that was tough with their sleeping but since then they have been doing so well they go to bed around 10 p.m maybe 9 p.m sometimes and 
they will usually seep through till around 2 to 3 to sometimes 3.30 a.m. So they, they'll sleep for that whole period and then they'll have a feed and they will go straight back to sleep. And then and then they'll have another feed around 6.30 a.m. So I feel so lucky about that because doing the twins night feeds is actually not that hard at all. And Jordan helps me. We have a twin each. So we both it's like we both have a newborn baby each and it just works so well and i feel like we completely have it under control but i feel like it's important to say that this is my third and fourth baby and i just feel so used to it and that is probably why i'm finding it really i don't want to say easy because it definitely has challenges so that easy is the wrong word but i'm doing it with a smile because one i know it really doesn't last forever and this whole baby newborn period will be over before i know it and two, I just feel so used to it. With my first baby, I used to get really overwhelmed. I had the baby blues. I felt like I couldn't cope. And that was because, for me, it was such a life change. It was such a drastic life change. I was 23. I had no idea what I was doing. Whereas this time, I feel like I've done it twice before. I kind of have an idea as to what I'm doing. So I feel so much more relaxed on the third and fourth time and it means I can enjoy it so much more because I just know that it doesn't last forever and this is the last time I'm ever doing this, 99% sure, 99.999% sure this is the last time I'm ever doing this. So I'm just enjoying it and yes, it does have its challenges, especially with two. It really does physically, like on me, like two babies crying at once. You really have to do your best to to feed them both at the same time, um, win them as quick as you can, rock two rockers, uh, just do all you can physically. But mentally, I am just enjoying it so much, which really helps, I think, with coping physically, because I'm just of the mindset that, as I keep saying, this is not gonna last forever. These hard times, the baby times, are not gonna last forever. And for me, in all of my children, the baby stage is the most challenging for me personally. And I find it the most challenging out of all of the ages I have yet experienced. I have not experienced teenagers yet, obviously. Um, so I can't speak for that. When my children are teenagers, then I can talk about that. But um, I love the baby stage. Obviously I do, and I'm making the most of it this time, but it is the most challenging because of obviously the night feeds, they are so dependent on you, it's very hard to do anything else when you have a baby with you. And it's very, very hard to keep a clean house. I've, I've thrown out the um, thought of having a clean house now though, I'm completely over that. My house is a mess, there we go. I'm happy with that. Um, it's not a mess. It could be a lot tidier though. It's clean, it's just not very tidy. There's things everywhere. But I'm happy, my kids are happy, my husband's happy. And thank you so much for joining me on this journey, basically. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for following me on Instagram. Thank you for joining me on this journey. And you've basically seen me find out I was pregnant, finding out I was twins, delivering twins, to then my recovery, to then me now, the girls are two months old, loving every second of being a mum of four, albeit sometimes challenging. I think I did touch on that in my recent vlog, that I am loving it, every second of it, but it is challenging. It is, it, it, it's gonna be. And I expect that, as to think that's why I'm dealing with it so well, because I know it's challenging, and I'm also dealing with it well, I think, because I have such a good support system. I am very close to my sisters, I have four sisters and we are all very close and we see each other a lot. I'm very close to my mum, I'm very close to my dad, my parents have been amazing throughout this whole thing. Um, my mum has always been there when I needed her, my dad has been amazing, he has been so good with the boys, he'd pick them up from school, take them to school, nothing I ask of any of my family has ever been too much. Jordan's family have also been amazing. His brother, um, my sister-in-law, his parents. We are so lucky. We really are so lucky that we have them. And I never take that for granted. I love them all so very much. And never take any of that for granted. 
I just know I'm very lucky with what I have and can't take any of it for granted because tomorrow is never guaranteed which is such a horrible thing to say but it's so true that's why I appreciate the now and I appreciate the every day that all of my children are healthy and happy and health is your wealth and it's all you can ever ask for in life so I am happy and content at being a mum of four. The future of my channel is not gonna change, it's, it's still me, it's still motherhood, um, lots of motherhood, lots of fashion, I love fashion, um, in case you didn't know. I did my first Instagram TV fashion video and you guys loved it, which thank you so much, loads more of them to come. I love beauty, I love everything beauty, I'm a huge makeup fan, um, skincare fan, so loads more beauty to come, and lifestyle, I love doing vlogs, which kind of ties into motherhood, and travel, we love our travel, however, travel has definitely changed since we have become a family of six. A huge heartfelt thank you to all of you that watch and support us as a family, we, we actually can't thank you enough, so yeah a huge heartfelt thank you lots more to come from us loads more to come from us make sure you're following us on instagram we are very active on there um me and jordan and obviously i am active on youtube as well i try and upload around three to four times a week i'm trying to do three a week at the moment but it is interesting uh, trying to juggle mum life and video life but yeah, a huge thank you for watching as always and I shall see you soon.